Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Grove Palace production of Musical Mash. Please turn off your cell phones and enjoy the evening. This is an original play based on the movie and the TV series and written by our very own Dr. Gary. Hold it right there. Cut. Time out. Hey, G, what's all the racket? We're about to start the play, but they haven't explained it yet. What's there to explain? They've all seen the TV show. But it's a musical. No one mentioned the music. What the hell is a musical? It appears to be a play where the dialogue stops, and the plot is portrayed through song. Through song? Yes. Wait. So an actress is saying her lines, and then out of nowhere, she just starts singing? Yes. Well, that is the stupidest thing that I have ever heard. You're doing a play, got something to say, so you sing it? Absurd. Who on earth is going to sit there while an actor breaks into song? What possible thought could the audience think other than this is horribly wrong? Remarkably, they won't think that. Seriously? Why not? Because it's a musical, a musical. There's nothing quite amazing as a musical with song and dance. Sweet romance and happy endings happening by happenstance. Bright lights, stage fights, and a dazzling chorus. If you want to be great, then you gotta create a musical. You know, I find it very hard to believe that people would actually pay to see something like this. Let's just say it's a Saturday night and you want to go out of the town. Got a lady to flatter who might give it up if you don't let her down. You could go see a tragedy, but that wouldn't be very fun. Or a play from Greek mythology. See a mother have sex with her son. Oh! You can go see a drama with all that trauma and pain. Or see something more relaxing and less taxing on the brain. Go! Apparently that happens in musicals as well. Everybody on stage just bursts into spontaneous dance. Why? Does it advance the plot? No. no. Advance character? Not, Not necessarily. necessarily. Then why do it? Because it's entertaining! Sí. 
six, seven, eight. production of Musical MASH. We trace the 407 7th Mobile Army Hus Surgical Hospital through the four seasons of the year, starting with spring 1951. Radar. The teddy bear is not G.I. And who is that? Sir, Teddy and I were drafted together. And that's just Corporal Klinger. <laughs> Sir, I received a letter from my mother telling me that my dear brother Abdul is dying. And according to Army regulations, you must send me home. Klinger, I read your 201 file. You don't have a brother. You've been bucking for a Section 8 to get out of this army for months. But they're drafting 16-year-olds, 60-year-old virgins, and dogs, so nobody gets out. Period. Nobody gets out. But what do I have to do? I don't belong in the Army. Radar, what do you have for me? Sir, I have all the communiques from headquarters for today. Well, write it all down and, and put, put it, it on, on my desk, desk where, where I can't can find it. it. How do you two do that? Oh, it's a gift. Oh, sir, I forgot. The two new surgeons have arrived at camp and they're waiting outside. Well, don't just stand there. Bring them in, and you two are dismissed. 
Nice dress. Why, thanks. I made it myself. It's part of my new spring collection. <laughs> Don't even ask. Captains Pierce and McIntyre reporting for duty. Speak for yourself, Hawkeye. I'm here for lunch and a martini. Look, fellas, I'm not a one for strict discipline, but I do run a tight surgical unit. Save your drinking for after surgery. That's fine with me, Captain, but I have a four-word question. Well, what's where, that? Where are the nurses? Hey, you and I are going to get along just fine. You know, get the hell out of here. Dismissed. Well, hello, ladies. You Hi. My... <laughs> I'm Fran, and this is Martha. You must be the new doctors. What's your specialty? Gynecology. Gynecology. Oh! <laughs> Come on, ladies. Let's have a cup of coffee in the mess tent. Thanks. Hey, fellas, I'm Radar O'Reilly, the company clerk. Nice to meet you. Do you need any surgical equipment uh, for me to order? Yeah, uh, equipment. Let me see. We need some copper tubing, two vacuum jars, mm -hmm. a few mason <coughs> jars, so we can build our still. Ah, uh, sir, that's not military. Ah, uh, that's okay. We're not military. Ah, uh, sir, that's not medical either. Sure it is. You want proof? We'll give you proof. 80 proof or 100 proof. <laughs> mm. <laughs> girls, girls, nurses, it's a few months before Bob Hope and his USO show is coming, and we have been chosen to entertain all the troops, but... We still look like nurses and not dancers. Well, okay, we're not dancers, but with these beautiful costumes, no one will look at your feet. So can't we show Colonel Blake just how talented we are? Excuse me, Major Houlihan. Yes? But I believe I showed Colonel Blake how talented I was last night. Please, <laughs> Gloria, back in line. Let's take it from the top, ladies. Okay, Daddy, this is your big number. In golden days, there was the Tonight's dinner will be liver and onions, and our movie will be Roy Rogers, Gabby Hayes, 
and Bullet the Wonder Dog in Happy Trails. I swear, if I see one more Western movie. Movies? What about the food? Liver and onions and spam? I, what is spam? It's not food. It's not meat. It's not even ham. Didn't the Geneva Convention forbid our dying of food poisoning? Wait, you haven't had SOS yet. SOS? What is SOS? Technically, it's chip beef on toast, but the guys here just call it shit on a shingle. <laughs> oh, sounds lovely. <laughs> in medical school, they always taught us to make sure we operate in a sterile field. But nobody mentioned that we're going to be operating in a field made of dirt and grass. Stop bitching and moaning. At least your patient has a chance of surviving. This guy's chances are slim or none. Hey, if he dies, just remember you don't have to send him a bill. Doctors, I don't think you should be joking around during surgery. You're absolutely right. What's your name, sweetheart? I'm First Lieutenant Maria Schneider, Assistant to Major Houlihan, the head nurse. Well, I'm John McIntyre, doctor, surgeon, wealthy. I'm the complete package. <laughs> He's the complete package, all right. I've seen him in the shower. But if you want to see for yourself, we can have a shower party at 2100 hours. I want you both to keep in mind that we're nurses and we have professional responsibilities here. You know, that reminds me. This guy goes into this fancy Beverly Hills clinic and the staff wants to introduce themselves. The first nurse says, says, hi, I'm Gladys. I'm the operating nurse and I'm gonna give you a great operation. The second nurse says, hi, I'm Mary. I'm the recovery nurse and I'm gonna give you a great recovery the third nurse says, she goes, hi, I'm Veronica. I'm the head nurse. <laughs> you two are just horrible. I'll tell you what's horrible. I just lost this patient. He's gone. War certainly is hell. War is in hell. War is war, and hell is hell. And of the two, war is worse. How do you figure that, Hawkeye? Easy. Who goes to hell? Sinners, I believe. Exactly. There are no innocent bystanders in hell. But in war, it's chock full of them. Little children, old ladies, civilians, even that guy over there. Other than the top brass on both sides, everybody involved in war is an innocent bystander. Hmm. Something to think about. Sister Mulcahy, Sister Frances. Oh, hello, Meg. How are you? And how are those rugrats, I mean, children in the <laughs> orphanage? Well, as head nurse of the orphanage, I do worry about their welfare. But you know, they're much happier today because of you. Tell me, Sister, where did you get the $200 that you donated to the orphans? Well, I won it at a poker game. We have a game every week in the mess tent. And do you always win? Well, usually. I may be a nun, but I have the luck of the Irish with a wee leprechaun in my table. <laughs> <laughs> Margaret, I don't know how I would stay in this place without you. You were so passionate last night. Frank, we have to be careful. Everyone here knows you're a married man. 
You're right, darling. No more talking. Let me nibble on your ear. <laughs> so I said to him, Mickey Mantle will never be another Lou Gehrig. He just doesn't have the stamina. Well, for my money, Joe D is the man. His record of hits in 56 consecutive games will never be beat. You too. You're a disgrace to the Army. How dare you talk about baseball? Well, sir, Radar here was raised in the Midwest, but he's been a Yankee fan for years. I wasn't talking to you, you weirdo. How did either one of you get to the Army? We, we were, were drafted. drafted. Frank, Frank, just leave them alone. Write them up. Well, I have to know why he dresses like that. Ha <laughs> ha! At last, someone's finally asked me that. When I have a brand new hairdo With my makeup as my disguise I try to look like a weirdo I enjoy a girl. I pretend that I'm kind of squirrely, and I flirt with the other guys. To do this, I get up early. I enjoy being a girl. I love to sit on my veranda and wear frilly robes in pink and red. And dress up like Carmen Miranda With a pound and a half of fruit upon my head I'm strictly a cross-dressed GI And my future I hope will be At home where a brave and free guy Will enjoy being a guy Having a girl like Degenerate. If I was your CO, I'd have you out of that dress in a day. Well, I'm not that easy. Whoa. <laughs> your left, your left, your left, right, left, your left, your left, your left, right. You had a good job when you left. You had a good wife when you left. You had a good life when you left. Sound off. Sound off. Sound off. Caden, count one, two. They say that in the army, the coffee's mighty fine. It looks like muddy water and tastes like turpentine.
was good work in the OR today, gentlemen. Henry. And what can I do for you? Henry, thank you. You've got to do something about Frank Burns. Uh, like send him to medical school? You know, he is a lousy surgeon, but you've got to get him out of our tent. Henry, you do not know what it's like sharing a tent with a guy who thinks he's all three wise men. I'll tell you what. I just sent a, requ a requisition to headquarters for a psychiatrist to come here and examine Klinger. I'll put the psychiatrist in your tent and move Burns out. You're bringing in a head shrinker? What, are you going to bring Frank's head down to normal size? Drink up, gentlemen, to the end of the war. To the end of all wars. Oh, sir, I'm sorry. I didn't know you had company. Um, Margaret, have a seat. Thank you. Oh, Margaret, what's on your mind? What can I do for you? Well, sir, it's about Major Burns. He completely lost his temper last night with the company clerks. I'm worried about him. You mean as a nurse? Well, as a nurse and as a colleague, I think he needs closer observation. I, I know this is unorthodox, but could Major Burns move into my tent? <laughs> <laughs> that is unorthodox. That's not either, either conservative or reformed. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, Margaret. Yes. You just solved the problem that T's too broad to me. Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Shack up. I mean, have Burns move into your tent. To better mental health. I'll drink to that. No, I'm not kidding. Major Houlihan and Major Burns are carrying on a torrid love affair. He's even moved into her tent. Maybe they're just friends. You and I are friends. I'm married. Um, you and I don't think of each other in that way. Besides, you're in love with your wife. Absolutely. But you do remind me of her. Really? Yes. What about me reminds you of her? Your hair, your skin. Joe! <laughs> uh, my tent right now. That's it. I'm done with him. Oh, Captain McIntyre? What did Trapper do? I found out he's been sleeping with another woman. Honey, he's been sleeping with all of us. Why do you think we get a shipment of condoms every month? <sighs> well, I think he needs another circumcision. Only this time with Major Frank Burns operating. <laughs> <laughs> now he started ordering me around. Bring me a drink, get me a cigar, change the record on the Victrola. What a pig. He acts like he owns you. You know, you're right. Line up, girls. First I wasn't afraid, I'm petrified Kept thinking I could never live without him by my side I spent so many nights thinking how he did me wrong And I grew strong and I learned how to get along Then he came back from out of space He just walked into my tent with that sad look upon his face I will serve. 
Excuse me, ladies. I need the room. I mean the tent. Let's look military here. Shoulders back, chest out, dismiss. I'd like to introduce you to Major Sidney Friedman, a psychiatrist from headquarters who is here to examine Corporal Klinger in response to a complaint from Major Burns. Nice going, Frank. Did you also complain about liver and onions every night or those exciting movies? Fellas, I think it's best if we start off with Major Burns. Major Burns. Why do you think Corporal Klinger needs to be sent to a mental institution? At the very least, Corporal Klinger has been out of uniform for days and months. Frank, speak for yourself. Rapper and I find him utterly delightful. So, what you're saying is if he doesn't conform to your idea of proper dress, he should be sent to an insane asylum. As I see it, unless we conform, unless we obey orders, unless we follow our leaders blindly, we can never remain free. I think I know what's going on here. Corporal Klinger. Please tell us, in your own words, why you dress like a woman. Well, it's like this. Here's my neurosis, it's not hard to figure. My chances of dying get bigger and bigger. So I just go round in feminine things. You are my favorite ring. So you want me to call you crazy so you don't get killed here in this war? Yeah, that about sums it up, ma'am. There's nothing insane about that. Case dismissed. Wait a minute. Aren't you going to even analyze me? I could analyze all of you, but I have no training in child psychiatry. <laughs> Hawkeye, Trapper, Klinger. You're all a disgrace to the U.S. uniform and the American way of life. I'm out of here. Attention. Tonight's dinner, for a change, will be liver and onion. The movie will be Bela Lugosi, Boris Karloff, and Lon Chaney, and Andy Hardy goes to Transylvania. Everybody, please report to the mess tent for today. orders for the mass commander to give periodic health lectures. Today's lecture is on sex education. <laughs> we may be in a foreign country, army regs never change. Now, you've already had sex. You have to stay here for this oh. lecture. Oh. Oh. No, we don't. Oh. Now, this is a diagram of a male and a female. But there are some differences. Mm -hmm. Sir, 
What are the differences? Well, the female has longer hair, <laughs> redder lips, <laughs> bigger breasts, <laughs> shaves her legs, wears high heel shoes. Any other questions? Yes. How exactly does one have sex? Well, you got to make sure that the woman wants to have sex. You never say, hey, do you want to have sex? Mm. Or what do you say we have sex? That's too direct. Mm. Well, if you don't know she, he, they, them, want to have sex, <laughs> how do you know? Well, Radar, that's a question that plagued mankind for years. <laughs> but, <laughs> let me ask you. You have a teddy bear? I do. Mm. Mm. You love your teddy bear? I do. <laughs> do you sleep with your teddy bear? <laughs> do you cuddle with your teddy bear? Yeah. Do you stroke your teddy bear? <laughs> yeah, especially on his kepi. I like him. <laughs> Does like your teddy bear respond? <laughs> <laughs> Well, teddy bears can't. Well, maybe it's a Jewish teddy bear. <laughs> <laughs> now, you gotta win. When a man and a woman do that, yeah. it's called foreplay. <gasps> now, after foreplay, if the couple, the I two. I think we've heard enough. <laughs> Keep it up, and it will be private. <laughs> <laughs> it's called foreplay, and it eventually leads to whammo, sex. Well, my time is running short. I think we covered a lot of ground here today. Before I dismiss you, don't forget, practice safe sex. Dismissed. <laughs> You know, Henry, that was fantastic. Hey, you can't miss if you got good material. Excuse me, Colonel. I may be a nun, and I am celibate. And I came to your sex lecture. Where were you on Easter Mass? Well, tell you the truth, sister. I avoid church religiously. Oh, and we're Captain McIntyre and Frank feeling religious also on Easter Sunday? Well, not exactly. But you'll have to excuse me a moment. I have to conduct some company business. I didn't go to propio school, so don't hit me with the ruler. <laughs> Beware. What's up, Henry? Okay. Well... I think that's the first time I didn't know what you were going to say before you said it. Three officers were transferred to Tokyo yesterday. Captain McIntyre and Major Burns left this morning. What? I'm happy about Frank. But Trapper? He left? Henry, he didn't say goodbye to me. Well, I'm sure you'll get his new APO when you can write to one another. You'll be fine. No, 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 no. I won't be fine. Trapper was the only bit of sanity in this entire asylum. Whom am I going to drink with? Who am I going to joke with? Who else knows the difference between who and whom? <laughs> Henry, what are we doing here? The wounded come in, we fix them. They come back. We send them out again. I don't know. If it's like a, 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 a treadmill. I don't know if I can cope with that. Henry, please, please tell me. Why are we here? Well, Hawkeye, all I can tell you is the rules they taught me in command school. Rule number one, young men die in war. Rule number two, doctors can't change rule number one. But Trapper didn't say goodbye to me. Sir, okay. you said there were three officers being transferred to Tokyo. Who's the third? That would be me. What? I'm going home soon from Tokyo to Indiana. My helicopter will be here in a few moments. Well, Godspeed, Henry. Enjoy Tokyo, but don't eat anything called sushi. They don't even cook it. Well, here comes my ride. 
Radar, you take care. Welcome. Oh. Hawkeye, it's been great. Yes, it has, Henry. Thank you, say, War is hell. Have fun in Indiana. You take care. Tell Schneider and Houlihan I'm sorry I couldn't say goodbye. Come on, you two. We need to talk. Is the rumor true? Colonel Blake, Major Burns, and Captain McIntyre have all been transferred out? Yes, it's true, ladies. This is war. Things like this happen. I've been sleeping with Frank Burns for two years, and he didn't even say goodbye. And I've been sleeping with Trapper for ten months, and he didn't even say goodbye. I've been sleeping, sleeping with, with Trapper for ten months, and he didn't, he didn't even say, say goodbye. goodbye. Well, I was his favorite. <laughs> no, that's what you say. <laughs> well, ladies, there's a song that's pretty popular back home that tells us how to handle this situation. Before I met you, gonna get along without you now Gonna find somebody who's twice as cute Cause you didn't want me anyhow Uh-huh, mm-hmm Gonna get along without you now Uh-huh, mm-hmm Gonna get along without you now with the man upstairs to get us passes to Tokyo. Sister, God can do that? No, God can't do that. I know a man, a rabbi, who works upstairs in battalion headquarters, and he can make that happen. Guys. Guys. Guys! Radar, for God's sake, what's the matter? It's a code red... Dispatch from company headquarters. What does it say, Radar? Is the war over? It's from battalion headquarters. I know, Radar, but what does it say? The transport helicopter assigned to bring Colonel Henry Blake to Tokyo took on enemy fire. Oh, no. (laughs) and went down in flames over the city of Japan. It was not crowd. There were no survive. Henry wouldn't want to pity fast. <sighs> he'd, he'd want us to think of some wonderful memories of him. Well, he used to deal with all my craziness. Oh, he did. Yeah, he did. <laughs> kind of like my dad. He so was. He was very good in bed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> TMI for the nun. <laughs> um, I think we need to sing a song in his honor. A song? What song? Yes, a song. I learned this from an English clergyman during the Blitz. Some things in life are bad. They can really make you mad. Others can make you swear and stress. When you're chewing on life's griffle, don't grumble. Give a whistle. And this will help things turn out for the best. And always look on the bright side of life. Come on! Always look on the bright side of life. When life seems jolly rotten, there's something you've forgotten. And past a smile and laugh and Silly. 
must always face the curtain with the bow. Forget about your sin. Oh, oh. <laughs> enjoy it. This is the last chance you had to be out. Forget about. know it all. Before you introduce Act Two, there's a few things the audience needs to know. We've gone over this. It's a musical. It's a comedy. What else can be said? The most important thing of all, this is real history. Both MASH the movie and MASH the TV series were created to make people aware of the idiocy of both the Vietnam War and wars in general. Boring. The audience wants entertainment, not a lecture. Okay, no lecture, just a few facts. Please, almost everybody who fought in that war is gone. Yes, over 2.5 million people died in the Korean War, but 7,800 Americans are still missing in action in 2023, while South Korea is still searching for over 124,000 of their servicemen. Let me ask you this, what was the number one injury to US troops in Korea? Uh, landmines? No, it must have been heat exhaustion out there in the jungle. wrong -o. Frostbite. Soldiers lost arms and legs because at night it got down to minus 54 degrees, just like in Antarctica. There were so many injuries that they invented the idea of a mesh a mobile army surgical hospital, because the delay caused by being sent to a hospital in Tokyo would have caused even more deaths. Okay, okay, but the war's been over for almost 70 years. Sorry, thank you for playing, but the July 1953 armistice has still not led to a peace treaty between South and North Korea. So, South and North Korea are still at war. Oh, so that's why we still have American troops serving in South Korea. That's the thing about getting into a war. There's a quote from an old movie called War Games, where the mega computer says, strange game, the only way to win is not to play. Think about it. Okay. Getting back to the play, almost a year has passed and there have been some changes. Corporal Radar has been sent home because of a family hardship and Corporal Klinger has been promoted to take his place. He no longer wears dresses. As we open, a new person is walking in through the Korean jungle to join the MASH unit. Weeds, damn, mosquitoes. Why am I here in this miserable, awful place? Korea. Korea, Korea, Korea. 
who could ever live in this desolate war torn space? Korea, 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 Korea. I just have arrived in Korea, and suddenly that name will always get the blame from me. Korea, drink the water, you'll get diarrhea. The army sent me here, a place that has no beer for me. Korea, what's the reason to keep men fighting? Why the hell ain't this country united? For people like me in Korea The most vile, disgusting place on earth Korea Captain Honeycutt? That's me, B.J. Honeycutt. Well, I'm Corporal Maxwell Klinger, company clerk for the 4077 MASH unit. So, what's new? Oh, ho, ho, there's lots of new things. For example, I took the place of a great guy named Radar. You're our new heart surgeon. Ke uh, Major Winchester is our new general surgeon, and Colonel Sherman T. Potter is our new company commander. But I guess you want to know about the nurses. Uh, not really. I'm very happily married. Huh, well, that's a switch. But then again, I used to wear a dress. Wow, welcome to Korea. Settle down, boys and girls. There have been many changes here at the 4077. I'm the big change. As your new CEO, things will be different. I know you all loved and respected Henry Blank. May he rest in peace. He did things his way. I do things the Army way. Now, I know you've all met Captain Honeycutt. But we now have a new chief surgeon replacing Frank Burns. Please welcome Major Charles Emerson Winchester III. Thank you, Colonel Potter. And, thank, and to all of you, greetings, salutation, and felicitations. Major Winchester comes to us from a small, obscure college called Harvard Medical School. Well, that's the whole shebang, shebang. I look forward to working with each and every one of you. Dismissed. Hello, Chuck. I'm Hawkeye Pierce, and this is our fellow surgeon, B.J. Honeycutt. That's Charles. Charles Anderson Winchester III. How do you do? I'll have no trouble filling Frank Burns' shoes. Well, yeah, that's true. Size 10 shoes with a size 3 brain. Uh, no worries there. I was skull and bones at Yale and fire beta kappa at Harvard. Well, I was BMOC at UCLA. <laughs> well, that's G-O-O-D. I was voted most likely to succeed in my kindergarten class in Maine. I can see we're not going to get along. By the way, Charles, <laughs> did you have any friends at Harvard? Or were all your buddies just me, myself, and I? What better company could there be? Sometimes I walk through the street by myself and I meet no one cleverer than I And when I gaze in a window at myself There's no handsome fellow passing by And I say to my 
myself I'm wonderful, wonderful Oh, so wonderful am I Sometimes I walk through the streets by myself Because no one wants to be with me The narcissist I see And I say to myself I'm wonderful, wonderful Oh, so wonderful am I The world is filled with wondrous things to see But they wouldn't have much meaning without me Then when it's late in the still Disappears. That's when I stand and I go to the mirror. What I see soon dissipates my fears. And I say to myself, I'm wonderful, wonderful. Soldier, my wife's six months pregnant. Oh, God! But that's bless. wonderful news, Lieutenant. I have been home in eighteen months. You do the math. Oh, <laughs> Mrs. Carol Randolph, Mrs. Randolph. Yeah, I have great news from your OBGYN. Yes, Miss. Well, not so good news. <laughs> um, BJ Honeycutt. That's me. I have a letter from your wife. Who wants mail? Come on, here, 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 you have one here. Oh, here's Singles Club. Here you go. Oh, sweetheart. I miss you so much.
I'll be looking at the moon. I'll be looking at the moon. Oh, and I'll be seeing you. Yeah. Now I gotta go. Colonel Flagg just arrived. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the guy from the CIA. Go, go. God. Go. Okay. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> okay. Okay, Pipsqueak. What tipped you off? Well, sir, you look nothing like you. And since you are a master of disguise. Thank you. No one could look nothing like you, except you. I'll buy that. For now. Making yourself at home, Flag? I have no home. I am the wind. Well, Colonel Wynn, how about blowing yourself out of that chair and let me sit on? Klinger, you're dismissed. Okay, Colonel. What I have to say is top secret and very hush-hush. Maybe I should dismiss myself. You know, I thought about that, but I might need you for some answering some medical questions. Such as? Are you aware that one of your surgeons, a Captain Pierce, operated on a, a Korean prisoner while not performing any help for the medical, for the regular soldier? I know all about it. The enemy soldier had a subdural hematoma and needed immediate surgery. Captain Pierce took care of that. Well, Captain Honeycutt took care of our guy. Well, that proves that Honey, that Captain Honeycutt was a commie infantrator. Bullshit! <laughs> My horse is patoot. I stand behind Hawkeye 100%. You CI creeps better leave him alone. We leave no one alone. I have orders to do whatever is necessary and have written permission to die in the process. But you said, wait, you said CIA. What's CIA? I have no intelligence. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Come in, gentlemen. Colonel Flagg was just leaving. Please, no names. I am the wind. I told you he was the wind. You told me he was the sun. No, I thought he was the moon. I stole the wind. What was that all about? Much ado about nothing, but we've got a major problem with next Sunday's USO show. What happened? Marilyn Monroe lost her makeup bag? Don't tell me Sophie Tucker left her wig at home. Worse, Bob Hope added two new acts, Carmen Miranda and Kate Smith. We have to cut the nurse's dance routine. Wow. How are we going to tell Houlihan about that? <laughs> I'm not. Now, Major Houlihan is going to do surgery Whoa. on both of us. I hope not. Well, I don't care how you do it, but let's just say we need our nurses here. Don't worry, Colonel. We'll take care of it. Okay. Are you insane? Look, the Colonel just backed me up with that guy from Creepsville. And sometimes you got to act insane just to keep your sanity. Oh. <laughs> Attention! Tonight's dinner, as a celebration of Thanksgiving, will be a combination of Spam and liver and onions. In addition, our movie tonight will be Tom Mix, Hopalong Cassidy, Duncan Rinaldo, and Diablo the Wonder Horse in Adios Amigos. That's it! I'm going AWOL. Calm down, calm down. Maybe we'll get lucky and be captured by the North Koreans. They don't ha serve any of that stuff you don't like. And they don't have cowboy movies. A river of liver and a tram of spam? Go, I don't go. I give up. <laughs> um, you're 
Rightful. Uh, time down. Uh, how about freedom and democracy that you were complaining about? They're highly overrated. And by the way, your rifle looks an awful like a guitar. Oh, it is a guitar. I learned to play in nursing school. It was wonderful. What type of music do you play? Hey, I play folk music like the Weavers. I love their version of Goodnight Irene. Oh. Are you going to play that? No, no, this is, this is just a uh, song about this lovely Korean war called Last Night I Had the Strangest Dream. I know I, that one. Oh, yeah. why don't you sing it with me? I think I will. Last night I had the strangest dream I ever dreamed before. I dreamed the world had all agreed to put an end to war. And the people in the streets below were these old cowboy movies? Look, we promised the colonel that the girls would not be in the USO show. So, yeah. so, so what I need you to do is put some glue on these shoes. Now, how do you expect them to dance when the shoe is stuck to the floor? Ah, so... Ah. between today and Sunday is turn a core of rockets back into nurses. Well, you said they re rehearsed one dance. Yes. I'm a, I think it's wonderful that everybody in the unit gets a chance to perform. I myself are thinking about doing a reading tonight at dinner of The Raven by well. Edgar Allan Poe. Oh. Should take the unit's mind off the maiming and killing you see right here every day. <laughs> Once upon a dreary, <laughs> while I pondered, weak and weary. Charles, you're killing me. <laughs> Poetry. I love poems. Don't you girls heard this one? There once was a man from Nantucket. <laughs> 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 Filth obscenity. Girls, how many times have I asked you to stop that dirty talk? Charles, let's get out of here. Stay right. Lieutenant, finish the joke. Yes, please. Actually, I have a better one. A staff sergeant who's been away from home for a year walks into a bordello and talks to the madam. And he says, Here's $500. I want your ugliest girl and a grilled cheese sandwich. And she says, oh, but sir, for $500, you can have the most beautiful girl and a three-course meal. And he says, look, honey, I'm not horny. I'm just homesick. <laughs> <laughs> See? know what's so wrong with a little dirty talk. It's this war that's obscene. <laughs>
I actually love it when Hawkeye whispers something dirty in my ear. There's nothing wrong with a little dirty talk. Dirty talking, talking, dirty talk. Think about that you like to do. You want to get a man? Just tell me how you can. If he can tell a dirty joke to you. Talk about a laugh with a thinking ass. Passing a guy who's really on. Martini is perfect without one of these. Hey, that's what I like, a guy who brings garnishes to a war zone. You think you guys could do something noble when you're off duty instead of swilling gin? You know, I resent that remark. All my life, I have drank gin, imbibed gin, partook of gin. But I never, and I swear, I never swilled gin. Wow. What proportion of gin to vermouth are you using here? Well, the book says eight to one. In my fraternity, it was 10 to one. But my recipe calls for a gallon of gin over softly you whisper the word Vermouth. <laughs> Skull. Prosette. Avusante. Lachayam. Mate. That's enough lowdown distraction for today. I think I'm going to take a walk. I'm going to take out a blonde. <laughs> Guys, do you mind if I ask you something personal? Sure, Klinger. Pull up a couch. I think I need a drink. I better make it a double. Nah, on second thought, I'm going to make it a triple. Hey, Klinger, what's rattling that cage of yours so much? Oh, my God. Don't tell me Frank Burns is coming back. Oh, no, my God, I hope not. No, it's nothing like that. You see, it's this girl I met. I've been seeing her down in the town, and she's really pretty and really nice. So I need a little liquid courage to ask her to marry me. Klinger, you just got out of skirts. Now you want to get back into one? No, <laughs> no, it, it, it's not like that. I love her, but I have a problem. You see, she got separated from her parents during the Battle of Inchon, and now she won't leave Korea until we find them. Well, Sister Mulcahy is not here right now, 
So I guess it's up to us to do God's work. Ah, to family. Jim Bean, Jack Daniels, and Jimmy Walker. <laughs> First thing about drinking hard don't liquor, don't drink, drink it, it all, all at, at once. once. Whoa. Whoa. I, I thought this stuff was supposed to make you feel good. Klinger, it's supposed to make you feel nothing. Well, I guess I could endure it. If it'll get me close to Sue Park. <laughs> Sue Park? Are her parents named Yosemite and Yellowstone? <laughs> you know, there's an avenue in New York named after her. Very funny, guys. Very funny. But you see, I spent all last year wearing a dress so that they would send me home. But now... But now what, Clinton? I never thought I would ever say these words. But I don't want to leave Korea. Attention, attention, attention. After two years of stalled peace talks, the South and North Koreans have just signed a ceasefire effective at 2,400 hours. We're going home! Hey, BJ, this calls for a celebration. Hey, yes. Klinger, we're going to take you to the USO show. Doesn't have much of an atmosphere, but it has Bob Hope, Maller and Monroe, and some well-known entertainers. And after, we're going to talk Colonel Potter into assigning you to the transition team that will have to stay in Korea a few more months. And I know this Irish nun who not only can marry the two of you, but knows this guy from battalion who deals with displaced refugees. Wow. Thanks, guys. You're more than welcome. Well, ladies, in a few hours, this field is going to be filled with every soldier in this part of Korea to see the USO show. Yeah, they built this stage and nobody's gonna see us perform. You know, when I get home, no one is ever gonna see me dance again. Lorraine, you don't know that. The stateside hospitals are much better equipped than we are. Girls, I just have to tell you how proud and honored I have been to serve with the best army nurses in the entire military. Oh. <laughs> oh. You got it. Okay. You know girls. <laughs> you know girls. You, you know girls. When I signed up for this duty, I never thought I was coming home with this. But I think all those classmates of mine who didn't sign up, who don't know what we did over here, I'm glad I came. <laughs> They could see me now, that little gang of mine. I'm eating army chow and drinking homemade wine. I'd like to suck up Ivy leaders to see the kind of top drawer first rate nurses we be. All I can say is, wow, we look at where I am. Doing good by doing right for
was this the greatest 4th of July celebration of all time? While we were watching these wonderful stars of stage, screen, and television, let's not forget the man upstairs. And speaking of stars, I salute the stars and stripes. The man I'm about to introduce to you needs no introduction. He's been entertaining our troops for many years. God bless him. I have the privilege of seeing him in Anzio and in Berlin. And let me tell you what a treat it was. So without further ado, let's put our hands together and give a great big mash welcome to Mr. Bob Ho! Thank you, Colonel Potter. And thanks for the chapeau. Well, here we are in South Korea. Definitely not a stop for the Queen Mary. Well, here we are in a little remote village called Weejambu, right out of Incheon. But, as we like to call it, the village of mosquitoes. <laughs> I was telling a sergeant the other day that I saw a flock of birds coming in, and I said, gee, maybe they'll eat the mosquitoes. He said to me, what birds? Those were the mosquitoes. <laughs> Ah, uh, but it's a pleasure entertaining you troops with the 407th Mash under the direction and command of Colonel Sherman T. Potter. Well, Miss Kate Smith was the queen of radio back in the States, and she's also the queen of our hearts here for her patriotism and belief that the show must go on. She sustained a little injury a couple of weeks ago, but... She flew down here on a bumpy transport to entertain you guys. Here she is, I give you, Miss Kate Smith. Hi, fellas. How are you all doing out there? You know, coming to, I just got out of rehab. That's the reason for this. But I found out that they were having a USO show, and I was going to be in that show regardless. So, you know, being a very patriotic person that I am, I've chosen to do for you Irving Berlin's God Bless America. God bless America. Stand beside her and guide her Through the night with the light from above From the mountains to the prairie From the ocean white with fog guys are here rather than packing to go home. But you can see me in an old Paramount movie anytime. But now let's welcome that sexy, sexy Hollywood starlet, Miss Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> I just want to remind you what you were fighting for. Wow, Bob. You guys sure know how to make a girl feel welcome. Well, you could have just said we know how to make feel it. We had know how to make a girl. 
No, I don't think these guys are like that. I was told they're educated. These mesh guys are educated in doing medical procedures. Well, there's nothing more medical than the complete physical. <laughs> and you are the complete physical. Bob, what am I doing here? Well, just standing here is doing a hell of a lot for their morale. It's doing great for mine. <laughs> if you say so. My friends told me that Korea would be hot and humid, but I find it quite lovely. Oh, it's really nice here. We've got some mountains. Yes. It's got some trees. Yep. A breeze. Yeah. We've got some grass. Oh, yeah. And yes. We, we got some dew. But I don't. <laughs> Well, Marilyn, if you don't do that, how about singing us a song? Well, as it happens, they just cast me in a new movie called Some Like It Hot. And I had to learn a song and how to play the ukulele. So I could do that. Give it to him. It's a heck of a title. Some like it hot, and some like it any way they can get it. <laughs> well, I used to listen to this gal on the radio when I was a little kid. But she still got it, and she's here to entertain what? you. The last of the Red Hot Mamas, Miss Sophie Tucker. Hello, boys! Hello, it's so nice to see all of you. <coughs> and I used to entertain your fathers and your brothers in World War I and II. Can you believe how old I am? <laughs> and I'm going to be entertaining you, but I want to wish all of you a good, safe trip home to your loved ones. And this is the last USO show you'll see, so I'm going to entertain you. Red Hot Mama You're 
today to entertain you, but her transport got delayed going into Seoul, but her troop is here to entertain you, so let's put our hands together and welcome Carmen Miranda's bevy of Brazilian bombshells.
Thank you. That's a re regular Brazil nut. <laughs> and ladies, you're fantastic. Come on, let's go backstage and listen to Bing Crosby. Ooh, you know how to hurt a guy. <laughs> well, before I return to Hollywood, I'd like to end on a personal note. Thanks for the memory of serving Uncle Sam in a place that has no plan for patching up our wounded so they can carry on. Oh, thank you so much. Those who only serve stateside will never know all that you did. Served on the great side of the Korean Mash, the Korean Clash. I love you, Mash. Thanks for the memory for waking up at dawn and stifling a yawn, for saving our boys' lives and limbs so they can live on. you boys and girls will be heading home in a few days. We have a very special song for you. Direct from the Metropolitan Opera, Mr. Robert Merrill. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Hi, everybody. I'm Robert Merrill. Yeah. <laughs> Now, your moms and dads might have told you that I am an opera singer, but don't worry. Today, we celebrate you and your trips back to the States. You know, my name wasn't always Robert Merrill. My real name is Moisha Miller, and I'm simply a guy from Brooklyn, USA. Now, in my neighborhood, and my neighborhood is Bensonhurst, in my neighborhood, Irish, Polish, Italians, and Jews live together in peace and harmony. And they all loved each other's music. So I'm going to sing for you today a Neapolitan love song Anamaya Kore, which speaks to love from, with the heart and soul. And Dean Martin. And let's see who else. The Chevrolet girl, Dinah Shore. Both of them have sung this song, so I guess I'm in good company. And I'd like you gals and guys, when you go back, home to sing this song to your family because it tells them that you will never leave them again. Now I'm very fortunate as you can hear I have Les Brown and his band of renown featuring Jeff Brown on percussion as my accompaniment. How about that? My life I give for you on my corner. I only live for you on my corner. I have but one desire, and that's to love you with all my heart. With all my soul, my whole life through. From stars I'll make your crown and kneel before you. I pray you take my hand for Oh, 
doors leading to heaven, a heaven mine and yours, on my corner, take it away less. is also the president of the Performing Arts League, better known as PAL, Rhoda Rosenberg. <laughs> taking the time to attend our show and support the Grove Performing Arts League. We hope you had fun. I would first like to apologize to a few cast members who were mistakenly left out of the PAL bill. Audrey Markman, please. Yay! Audrey, Audrey Markman is Major Sidney Friedman also, besides being one of the beautiful dancers. Nurse Kelly oh, is yeah. played by yeah. Bonnie yeah. Kemper. <laughs> Nurse Glory is played by Bonnie Brown. Where are you? Yeah. And Nurse Josie is played by Barbara Dubler. Yay! Yeah. You've heard the expression, it takes a village. So many people have contributed so to this good. evening's success. So let's applaud our unseen heroes come out and be recognized. Our backstage managers. Our prop men, our scenery designers. Our holding room attendant. And a shout out to our makeup 
without their hard work. We have to thank Larry Boca and Steve Coslow, our boys in the sound booth. It's not an easy task managing all the microphones, lights, and curtains. And we have to give a special shout out to Larry Boca. Larry has been in the sound booth for 20 plus years for every rehearsal and every show. And And on behalf of PAL and the GROW community, we would like to publicly thank Larry for his many years of dedicated service. <laughs> Jerry said, take your pension. <laughs> Lee Vogel and Judy Torchetto are the Edith Heads of the GROW. And in case you don't know who Edith Head was, she won several Oscars for costume design during the 50s and 60s. Judy Lutz, our tireless choreographer. And our beautiful Marilyn Monroe. Yay! Judy worked tirelessly, long, hard hours, practicing day and night, organizing the dances, and our beautiful dances. We can't thank Judy enough. I have to get the other page. And my fingers are not working too well. Oh, well, here we go. And how about, how about those dances? Yeah! <laughs> they are amazing, and they practice for so long that they go to sleep going five, six, seven, eight. They are the best. Thank you, girls. And the world may have Gene Krupa, Buddy Rich, and Ringo Starr. We at The Grove have the very talented Jeff Brown on the drums. <laughs> Our assistant director, Marilyn or White. Now you can come now, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Marilyn has been by my side in the several shows that I've done at the Grove. She is my right hand and my left hand. Whatever I needed, she said, don't worry, I'll do it. And she did it. And I could not do all this without her. Thank you, Marilyn. And Judy Lind, who was down here in the front giving out flowers. Yeah. She does everything for everybody, but you don't know about it. It's all very <laughs> quietly done. She does our pal bill. She puts, does the, the pictures at every rehearsal, taking pictures. She's just invaluable. Very valuable, not invaluable. Okay. To the entire cast, you outdid yourselves. You memorized your lines. You worked and rehearsed long hours. It was a labor of love. It showed in your performance, and I'm so proud of all of you. Thank you. Now, last but certainly not least, Dr. Gary Dubla, our brilliant and brilliant. Whoa! Whoa! Bravo! Gary. Bravo! Whoa! Our brilliant writer and musical director. A few years ago, Gary and I were chatting about what kind of a show to do. And he had many, many ideas that were brilliant. But I mentioned to him that I am and always have been a mash addict. And I'd love to see it made into a musical. Well, a few weeks later, I get an email with the first two scenes. Gary has written a beautiful, heartwarming, soul-searching script. And along with his original parody songs, gave birth to musical mash. The Grove is lucky to have you. You are an amazing talent. Thank you for making my wish come true. To the residents of the Grove who might think they would like to join PAL, take the plunge. You'll make new friends, have fun, work hard, and then wonder why it took you so long to join. One last thing. When you go home tonight, don't forget to change your clocks ahead <laughs> one hour. Thank you.
I want to thank you all, but I have only one thing to say. The manor, the village, and both the estates make up our community, the Grove. Retiring in Boynton can really be great if into the activities you don't. The truly friendly neighbors you have scored. Still.